Welcome to our Reach Your Peak Education. This video is all about the changes that occur in the brain as a result of Parkinson's and how exercise can help. In this video, I will cover why it's so important to be your own expert on Parkinson's, what in fact is Parkinson's, and how you can use exercise to help treat your Parkinson's. At Rachel Peak, we believe that every person living with Parkinson's should be empowered to be their own expert. If you understand why your condition causes your symptoms and how exercise can create changes in the brain to address those symptoms, you are more likely to commit to an exercise regime that takes advantage of those benefits. So what is Parkinson's? Parkinson's is a progressive neurodegenerative condition which affects the nerve cells in the brain that control movement. Over 10 million people worldwide have the condition. In fact, it's the fastest growing neurological condition in the world. Most people will be diagnosed over the age of 65, but some people are diagnosed under the age of 50 with a type of Parkinson's called young onset. When you have Parkinson's, the neural circuits that transmit signals from your brain to your muscles work less effectively. The signals are passed from one nerve cell to the next across a gap called the synapse. The chemical that transports the signal is called a neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter that transports the signal in our movement circuits is called dopamine. A lack of dopamine leads to poor movement control. The basal ganglia sits deep inside our brain. It's the area of the brain which controls movement. It receives signals from other parts of our brain, interprets those signals, and coordinates movement accordingly. Think of it as the brain switchboard. The substantia nigra is part of the basal ganglia and is where all our dopamine-making cells are found. In Parkinson's, the cells in the substantia nigra die, causing dramatic reduction in the amount of available dopamine. By the time someone exhibits physical signs of Parkinson's, they have lost anywhere between 70 to 80% of their dopamine producing cells. As just stated, movement is regulated by the basal ganglia. There are circuits which initiate movement and circuits which inhibit movement. It's the fine balance between the initiation and inhibition of movement that gives us controlled, meaningful movement. Think of it as the balance between the accelerator and brake on a car. A lack of balance between these circuits will lead to uncontrolled movement or maybe no movement at all. When we use exercise to treat Parkinson's, we are exercising your brain, not your body. We are aiming to create a physiological effect on the brain. You will ultimately get fitter, stronger, improve your balance and reduce your risk of other long-term health conditions. But these are just positive side effects of the medicine that is exercise. The three N's allow us to explain what happens in your brain when you exercise with Parkinson's. Neuroprotection, neurorestoration, and neuroplasticity. Let's take a look at each one in turn. Firstly, neuroprotection, which is the protection of the dopamine that you have available as it passes messages from one nerve cell to the next. Exercise produces proteins known as neurotrophic factors. They act like bodyguards for the dopamine as it makes its way across the synaptic gap. Then we have neurorestoration. We move from bodyguards to cheerleaders. Exercise makes our nerve endings more responsive to dopamine. It makes the receptors on the nerve cells more excited to receive dopamine, leading to more efficient use of the available dopamine 
and a better signal. And finally, neuroplasticity. This is the brain's ability to create new neural pathways and bypass faulty ones. Exercise will create an environment in the brain to nurture these changes. The current evidence tells us that the three ends only happen when you engage in exercise or activity at a moderate to high aerobic intensity. So it needs to be something that makes you out of breath and sweaty. It's probably more effective if it's a task that your brain perceives as novel or involves a level of complexity. We hope this video has helped you take another step closer to being your own expert at exercising for your Parkinson's. If you want more information on how we can help you at Reach Your Peak, head to our website.